I'm Yossi Elran. Um, here's a bit about uh, what I do. I work at the Davidson Institute of Science Education at the Weizmann Institute of Science. We have uh, 72 science and math education projects with over 300,000 participants. Some of these I'm in charge of uh, the recreational math projects, such as the Math by Mail, where we have 4,000 participants online in a yearly course for recreational math for kids in Hebrew, Arabic, and we're just starting in English. I organize the Celebration of Mind and annual National Recreational Math Conference and other stuff. So can John Conway Retrolife, the number 11, and a mathematical magic trick be coherently addressed in six minutes? Because according to the mail, uh, I understood we have to address all of these issues. And uh, so that was the question. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> we will, I will try, actually. Of ten, two years ago, uh, I was about to give my uh, a speak about the game of life, and John Conway was just before me, and this is a quote from him. <laughs> but I'm still going to speak a bit about the game of life. This is a board about the game of uh, showing the game of life. A few years ago, I introduced it as a puzzle, where the puzzle is given a certain configuration of the game of life. What is its previous generation, giving some extra restrictions? We rephrased this uh, as the following puzzle, which is much more straightforward. We have to surround each white token on a given board. So here you have just a solution. And we have to surround each white token with T black tokens, in this case, uh, each white token has to be surrounded with exactly three black tokens so that each black token is not surrounded by two or three other black tokens. You can notice here the black tokens here have either one or zero neighbors. They can have more, but in this case, you're not allowed to have two or three. And no empty square on the board can be surrounded by three black tokens. It is the puzzle and the solution. This has been generalized to use different sets of rules, also different topologies, with the theme of number 11. So here we have it on a hexagonal board, and this is my, uh, in, in my uh, gift exchange uh, paper, and uh, the Roman 11 on a Go-type uh, board. And another generalization which we have is two-player retrolife, where the players uh, decide on a shape to make with white tokens, so you can see a, a white token shape, and then Players take turn putting black tokens, which will create the shape. Now, the player who places the last black token, which will create the shape, using the restrictions I said before, is the winner. Now, it's not as simple as it uh, looks, because the last player, the, a winner can make the other player not win in the next move by adding black tokens other places and making all kinds of structures. So here, this is a winning move for one of the players, for the next player, and your task is where should he put that black token to, to win. So all the black tokens will, if you put the rules of the game of life, all the black tokens will disappear and you'll get back the white, only the white shape. So we've done uh, the game of life and evolution simulations. We've spoken about generating puzzles. Can there be a generation of a class of magic tricks? Well, the answer is yes. And here is a pyramid magic trick, which was introduced by Martin Gardner and further spoken about by Yakarko Makai. It can be done with cards, it can be done with numbers. Here's the magic trick. Spectators shout out 10 numbers, and the magician immediately predicts, he says, ah, I'm gonna do an amazing mental magic trick, and you're gonna get the number nine. So he looks at this row, and he says, well, I'm gonna tell you how I did this magic trick. He says, every two numbers I summed together. So two plus seven gives us nine, and seven plus eight, gives us 15. Ah, but 15 is larger than 9. Any number which is larger than 9, we sum the two digits together. So 1 plus 5 is going to give us 6. 8 plus 3 is 11. 1 plus 1 gives us 2. 3 plus 5 gives us 8. 5 plus 6, again, 11. So we sum the two digits together. 1 plus 1 gives us 2. 6 plus 2 is 8. 2 plus 0 is 2. 0 plus 3 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. So now we get 9 numbers in the row. Okay, and we do this again, we get eight, and then seven, and six, and five, and four, and three, and two, and one, and the predicted number appears, number nine. So, how is this done? Um, well, you just, the magician, all he has to do is look at the, la the first row and take the red numbers, the two and the one, and sum them together, that gives us three, and then sum the black numbers, 
by multiplying each of them by three. So three times three is nine, and two plus times three is six, and nine plus six is 15, plus three gives us 18, and one plus eight is nine, and that's how he predicts it, by doing this kind of uh, calculation very easily just from the last row. Now, we can start with any row, however, all the other rows require a combination of all the numbers in the row, so it's a bit difficult to do this mentally. But if we look at what the coefficients are needed Giving the numbers of rows, here we have up to 40 rows to do this trick. And we chose the 10th row, which only has four colors in it. Doesn't it give a nice fractal shape, this? And uh, so the 10th row is the row which has 1, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, 1, which are the coefficients for the last row. After that, you get 28. And I'm referring you here to, to a, an article by Behrens and Humble in the Mathematical Intelligencer, who shows this for the case of moduli uh, 3. And so finally, if we take a look at the fractal for modulus 10, we get a neat magic trick for the G4G11. There are 11 numbers in the row, and this works exactly the same, and this can also be generalized. So here's the pyramid magic trick, modulus 10, with 11 numbers. These are the 11 numbers that the spectators shout out. And here the math is just to keep the units digit and throw away the 10. So 10 plus 2 is uh, 2, you get 12, but you chuck away the 1, so you get 2. 2 plus 7 is 9, 7 plus 8 is 15, you keep the 5, chuck out the 10s, and so on. And here the magician is going to predict the number 6, which incidentally is the number that he gets to, and these are the coefficients, the numbers in red are times 1, in purple times 5, and by in green times 2, and thank you very much. <laughs> in six minutes.